My name's Janine Driver. This is the Celebrity Lie Detector Live every Wednesday night on Facebook. And then I put it on social media like on YouTube and in LinkedIn. Up next, Wendy Williams has been in the news quite a bit. I'm going to profile Wendy Williams in the next couple of weeks. So you'll get to find out her movement pattern analysis profile. And uh, I'll tell you a whole bunch about Wendy Williams. In the meantime, let's talk about why Wendy Williams was in the news this past week. Wendy Williams tell-all interview turned down by Gail King. She wants to do this big tell-all. Wendy Williams is struggling with her new tell-all. People don't want it because Wendy Williams is saying what specific questions people can ask and what questions they cannot ask. And People aren't interested in that today. People are in, interested in authenticity and, and being able to, you know, direct the conversation. Wendy Williams, 27-year-old boy toy, Mark Toblin, Tom Blin, is a convicted felon. This went all around the news. This guy's a convicted felon, and Wendy Williams has been spotted around town with him. Uh, and let's analyze this. She's caught off guard. Wendy Williams is right here, and this is her boyfriend, this young guy. And she's caught off guard. Now, Wendy Williams, if you don't know this, just came out of rehab. She used to have a drug addiction and an alcohol addiction. And well, I guess once you have it, you always have it. Some people are saying she's relapsed on the drugs. Some people are saying she relapsed on alcohol. You be the judge, you be the judge. Do you think, put it on Facebook here or on Twitter or on YouTube or LinkedIn. Do you think in this particular clip, Wendy is under the influence? I'm not saying judge her. I'm just saying, do you think she's under the influence? Wendy, how are you? <laughs> oh my God! You look, you look, you look, you look. How is LA treating you? I gotta ask. I love LA. You love, you love LA. I love New York more. I'm going home tomorrow. Uh -huh. But um, life here suddenly has been really good. I've been here for five days. I'm gonna get my chicken and waffles, and I'm going back to my hotel. Oh my gosh! I can't believe you're in my face like this. <laughs> Did you happen to notice the start stop sentences and the slurring that Wendy was doing? So start stop sentences often happen when we notice we're getting ourselves in trouble. Pay attention when you're talking to someone across the negotiation table, someone begins to say something and then they stop and they go in a different direction. Our new product just, uh, one of the things that we're really excited to launch in 2020 is we have this one item, but they started with, hey, our new product has this. And then um, I'm really excited. You'll see it. It's, they're called start stop sentences. So pay attention to them because it's like, wait a minute, I'm going down a path that I don't want to go down. So Wendy Williams here is slurring her language. And when she slurs it a second or third time, even this is where she's like, oh my God, I can't believe you guys are here. I can't believe you're, you're like right up in me here, like right here. So let's watch it again and pay attention to the start stop sentence. Do you think it's just her caught off guard or do you think she's under the influence? Wendy, how are you? <laughs> oh my God. You look, you look, you look, you look, how is LA treating you? I gotta ask. I love LA. You love, you love LA? I love New York more. I'm going home tomorrow. Uh -huh. But um, life here suddenly has been really good. I've been here for five days. I'm going to get my chicken and waffles and I'm going to go back to my hotel. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you're in my face like this. <laughs> Hi. All right, did you pick up on it? You, you caught it, didn't you? Oh my. Kevin, Kevin if, you don't, if you don't mind me asking here. That's not Kevin. Uh, it's, uh, no, she lived in a right. friend. Oh, he's a friend. Please don't ask about Kevin. I won't ask. We have an 18 year old son. Yeah. And um, I'm sensitive to that, but that is not Kevin. That's. Um, What's your name, sir? No, don't do it. I won't, I won't, I won't ask. Don't do it. I won't ask. I won't ask you. Okay. How, look, how are you and the family doing? Yeah. You, and, you and young Kevin, right? Yeah. Young Kevin and I are fine. You know, big Godspeed. And, um, and you know, stuff happens in life. Yeah. Stuff happens, and, and it's okay. I've, I've still got a very full life that I really enjoyed. Please don't be wrong. Okay, I won't. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, my God. 
I didn't plan on this, but it is what it is. And I have got to go eat my food with potato salad and everything. And I got to get on the plane in the morning. But I have a very full life. Thank you for watching. I would ask you to respect our privacy, but please, I don't respect people's privacy. That's why I do the hot topics. So yeah. turning that is a fair game. But um, all three of us are I doing fine. Are we? Are we going to see the three of you guys? Yeah, I mean, together. That you may, maybe not as a married. Yes. Yes. Family. Notice this is the second time she's doing this with the eyes. And, and there was a tutting there. So people think that she's drunk. She's fluttering her eyes, stuttering. Uh, look at the eyes right here. And I zoomed in. So this is when it first asked if this was Kevin. I think the reporter was asking if this was your, was your son, not your husband, was the son. And I think she misunderstood. And she said, we have a son together. I think she thinks he was asking if it's your husband. So maybe she thought the reporter just couldn't see into the car. So right here, when you see the three or four whites of the eyes, that is fear is there, repulsion. So when someone is repulsed by something, fear or shock. So fear, shock, if someone is repulsed by something you said or you did, watch for this. You say a dirty joke or drop an F-bomb, you may see this with your, you know, with your supervisor across from the, across from the table. This is a blue streak. My name's Janine Driver. That was a short segment when Wendy Williams, wait till you see what's coming up next. If you've not checked out my training, check it out at bluestreakertraining.com and take advantage of 80% off, limited offer. Wait till you see our next topic. Every Wednesday night, I'm here. If you are here on Facebook Live, stay tuned because I'm going to play the next segment. If you're over on YouTube, I break them up into chunks. So you'll be you'll be more than welcome to go and, and check out what I've already posted above and below. And uh, let me know what you think. Put your comments below and let me know if a topic comes up that you'd like me to address. Send me the link. Don't just tell me, hey, look into this. Send me the links. It makes it a lot more helpful. I'm doing this all by myself. I don't have a team of people over here. Thanks for tuning in. My name's Janine Driver. I'm the Celebrity Lie Detector. Remember, celebrities are just like us. They lie, just like we do. John Stewart is livered and rightfully so. I spoke about John Stewart a little earlier in my segment, and I'm like, oh, I'm surprised I didn't bring videos. I thought I had videos. Evidently, I put them down in this section. So now let's explore. John Stewart went up on the hill to fight for you know, this amazing cause to help people who were there at 9-11, making a difference, the responders. Let's explore what Jon Stewart had to say. Everyone was talking about this. It went crazy viral this past week. You know, all the first responders, they love him. The House panel passed this at the day after they passed this, uh, this fund. Uh, for the bill, uh, the day after John Stewart gave his impassioned testimony. You know, I used to get, I, I, would, I would be so angry at the latest injustice that's done to these men and women. And, uh, uh, you know, another business card thrown our way uh, as a way of, of shooing us away. Like children, trick-or-treating rather than the heroes that they are and will always be. Ray would say, calm down, Johnny, calm down. I got all the cards I need. And he would tap his pocket. Where he kept the prayer cards. 343 firefighters. The official FDNY response time to 9-11 was five seconds. Five seconds. That's how long it took for FDNY, for NYPD, for Port Authority, for EMS to respond to an urgent need from the public five seconds
Holy, this, there was a lot happening here, right? So did you see it? Did you catch it? Let's go over it together. What did you see? You know, I used to get- uh, We see a lot of pacifiers with John Stewart. So a pacifier happens, I'm, I'm, looks like I'm pacifying because uh, I keep adjusting my shirt. A pacifier is anytime a piece of our body touches another piece of our body. Joe Navarro, retired FBI agent, came up with this terminology, the word pacifier, because a baby uses a pacifier to comfort themselves. As adults, we pacify by touching one piece of our body to another piece of our body. The pacifiers are through the roof here. It's saying to me that this man, John Stewart, is authentically stressed. We get it. Some people say, oh, it was so staged. It was fake. I don't believe it was fake. I believe it was real. The emotions are in sync. And here's the deal. Body language happens up to five seconds before thought. And so body language should be happening about a half a second before even words come out of someone's mouth. And we see that with John Stewart. As a matter of fact, he has that long pregnant pause. Let's watch his pacifiers and, and some other body language that was happening. Are you scared? So right there, there's a pacifier right over his mouth right there. Here we go. I would, I would be so angry at the latest injustice that's done to these men and women. And, uh, you know, another business card thrown our way uh, as a way of, of shooing us away. Like children, trick-or-treating, rather than the heroes that they are and will always be. Ray would say, calm down, Johnny, calm down. I got all the cards I need. And he would tap his pocket. Okay. This is... How you can tell, one of the ways you could tell something is uh, authentic emotion is that when you see it on someone, you feel it. This is why when you go to a movie, you know it's a movie, you know it's fake, but you'll like cry or you'll get scared because your brain doesn't know the difference between reality and something like pretend in a movie because it's seeing it, right? You're seeing sadness even in a movie and you begin to cry. Here, it's very hard to fake sadness, right? So right here, this is John Stewart authentically, like really trying to hold it in. This is a man that's suffering right here, suffering. And you feel it, you begin to get emotional. If you really took a second to watch it and to listen to his tone and pitch and the pausing and, and his body language when he begins to shake, watch this. All right, so he's also doing something right here. He's moving, he's moving. You see him go from here, you see him physically move. And so when we're stressed, we will move. When we move our bodies, we move our minds. Think about it, that's why you go to the gym. You move your body to move your mind. Confessions happen walking from the interrogation room to the jail cell and from the jail cell to the interrogation room because it's the act of moving. When you move your body, you can move your mind. As a matter of fact, if you tend to be depressed, just move your furniture around and you'll sit in a different spot. So start moving your body, move your body. Watch it again. In my world right here, this is called rising. So we see him lift up. Oprah Winfrey does this a lot when she adjusts in the chair. Now, some of you say, well, that's how you adjust in a chair. No, some people go forward like this and they go straight up. Some people go like that. Um, other people go like this. Other people just lay down. I'm kind of a, a downward angle. This is connected with evaluating here. This is the scales of justice. This is prioritizing. It makes perfect sense exactly what he's showing us. And so this move is connected to something called movement pattern analysis. We each have a, a behavioral fingerprint and it tells everything about how you're motivated to spend time and energy with decision making, interacting with people, what's your level of multitasking, and how do you identify with what's happening in your world. So watch, watch John Stewart. Another pacifier. Leans back again. And this is, I'm ready to take action, okay? So you'll see a lot of the talk show hosts doing this just before the monologue. He's like, okay, I got this, I got this. It's a massive pacifier. Look at all this pacifying happening. Massive pacifying, using some pressure on the table to move over, regrouping. Let me, let me see his facial expression too.
Mm -hmm. You can see his jaw involved. Sadness. Move your body, move your mind. There is not a person here, there is not an empty chair on that stage that didn't tweet out, never forget the heroes of 9-11. Never forget their bravery. Never forget what they did, what they gave to this country. Well, here they are. And where are they? And it would be one thing if their callous indifference and rank hypocrisy were benign, but it's not. You're not. You see disgust? Benign, but it's not. Benign, but it's not. Benign, but it's not. All right, look at this. This is a combination of anger and disgust right here. Look at this, the nose is up, this is, this is disgust, and we see the tightening here, some of the lips. This is anger and disgust. Makes sense. Not. Sadness, look at this, all the sadness. Your indifference costs these men and women their most valuable commodity. Time. Adjust in the chair again. Look at this, and leans forward. All right, so he leans forward and back quite a bit. This is connected to what's called anticipating. So anticipating is I'm leaning into the future and I bring the future to now. So these are people that are, uh, and we all do this. It's just some people do it more than others. And we see this as a major part of John Stewart's uh, behavioral fingerprint. Think about it. These are the people that set goals, measure progress, update plans. These are the people that also run scenarios and do worst case scenarios. They are the people that want to get ahead of it. Um, you know, what, what's going to happen? And so they're doing this. The bill is not even expired yet. These funds, but it's about to expire. And John Stewart is getting ahead of the game. It's getting ahead of the game. You see that something as simple as moving forward and moving backwards. You'll be surprised. So many, so many people, it's when I profile them and they don't move at all forward and back. I find it so fascinating. I'm like, wow, they moved forward like one time barely. Fairly, fairly. It's the one thing they're running out of. This should be flipped. This hearing should be flipped. This hearing should be flipped. This should be flipped. Look at this. Look at this. Contempt. I'm not contempt, anger, disgust, again, look at this, like snarl down, down at the people, look at that. The hearing should be flipped. These men and women should be up on that stage and Congress should be down here answering their questions. Another one, did you see that disgust too? Look at Thing they're running out of. No, we were set on that disgust. I want to show you. There is not a person here that. This should be flipped. This hearing should be flipped. Men and women should be up on that stage. And Congress should be down here answering. See it right there. Look at the nostrils come out. Answering. See it? answering their questions now. as to why this is so damn hard Disgust. and takes so damn long and why no matter what they get something's always pulled back and they got to come back advancing rising advancing rising do you see how he's doing this a lot this advancing and rising this is a major part of his profile is that thinking about the future you know what are the consequences here you know really trying to get ahead of it and then evaluating this is where the why lives this is like prioritizing like this should be this should matter to all of us this is all about prioritizing this is also taking something really complex and making a system out of it making it easier to understand and if you think about john stewart even my little kids could watch this and understand what this man is saying he's not talking in an esoteric way that it's like i don't understand what the guy's saying i don't really get his point no boom he gets right to it you get that a is mad he's upset he's disgusted he is not happy he's devastated and he's telling people off and saying we've got to do better this is unacceptable
It's authentic. There is not a person here. There is not an. The one thing they're running out of. The one thing they're running out of. He's shaking here. One thing they're running out of. Sadness. It's the, the voice, just everything. John Stewart, if you watch this, I think you're amazing. Thank you for making a difference and taking a stand and inspiring people to look at their world in a different way. Just incredible, incredible. My name's Janine Driver. Stay tuned for the next segment. I am the human lie detector. Be sure to like the page, put your comments below. Incidentally, if you are on Facebook or on YouTube and you want to badmouth this channel, you're just going to be blocked. So save your time, go to bed, go to work create your own channel. This is a learning channel for me. It is not just me being a talking head. If you want fast information, good, go buy a book. You could buy my books or buy Joe Navarro's books or a ton of other books on human behavior, how to read and influence human behavior. I, we're just a happy place. So if you want to be negative and a hater, all I'm going to do is block you. It's very easy to do. My name's Janine Driver. For all of you who are tuning in or finding this valuable, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sharing this with your friends. And I am so excited to talk about what's happening next.